Hey, it's Don the Auction Professor here. I've got another What Sold on eBay video today. I've just picked some random items as always, and we're going to show you some of what we sold last week right now. So here we are with the first item. This is actually a fob. If you don't know what a fob is, a fob would have hooked onto a chain, a leather strap, or something along that line, and it would have balanced or been the other part connected to a watch, a pocket watch usually would have hung in the pocket or out of the pocket so you could grab it real easily with the fob. There's other types of fobs as well too. This one's fairly common. This one probably dates to the 1920s or 30s, but again, there was many of these made. It's a promotional item for an item that's just not so sought after, the adamant suit. I usually pay a dollar or less on items like this. Basically, I got $14.50 back on it, so I made about a 10 or $11 profit off of that quick purchase on this. Next one here is a 78 record, RC Cola and Moon Pie. Now this was a fairly popular song in the South back in the 50s and 60s. I've drank an RC Cola for years. My wife grew up on RC Cola and Moon Pies. There's actually three flavors of Moon Pies if you didn't know it. Banana, chocolate, and vanilla. Uh, we actually have somebody send us the vanilla ones because some of those you can't get up here in the north where we live. But either way, this one went for 25 bucks plus, of course. And of course, we charge shipping on everything, so the buyer actually paid shipping as all buyers do from our store. Now this is a Super 8mm home movie. It's actually four reels of film. It has magnetic sound. We sold this for $200. We sell movies all the time. I constantly pick them up whenever I can. We'll list them in big group lots, and usually some people will buy multiple ones at the same time. So what we do with these, we usually check them out and make sure they work as well. These are almost always a good purchase for us, as long as you know which ones to buy. Large chunk of them aren't worth a ton of money, but feature films, this is the entire feature-length film with sound. These go for some good money. Next one here is a trade card. Now, this one went to someone who's bought many, many items from us. I took 107 on this one here. Uh, it's been up for maybe four days, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting, rather uh, unique card. It's roughly the size of a postcard. Shows up at paper shows. This one, I think, came from a picker of mine. Now, these I did show in a haul, too. These are like quarter items. I paid a quarter, I think, each. So I have about 75 cents into these. I sold them for $12.50, plus, of course, shipping on these. They are Mark's Nodders. The heads both nod on Goofy. They weren't worth listing separately, especially two of the same ones. Goofy would be a long-time sale. Pluto sells okay, so I just lumped these together. I'm fine with that. Basically made 10 bucks on these. Sheet music is the next one here. This one did sell for $24.50. It's an early jazz from 1926. Most things that reference coffee in the title on sheet music sells very well for us. So this is another good example of sheet music. We spent a quarter or less on this one. This one came in a big lot. This one came in a huge lot, so I have pennies into this one here. Now here's a postcard. Now, a lot of people don't mess with the Chrome postcards. These are newer ones from the 60s or 70s. If you get the right topic, they always sell. So I do mess with Chrome. Chrome can get you a good chunk of change. We've sold Chromes for a couple hundred bucks in the past. Chromes are the ones that almost look like a color photograph if you're not familiar with what a Chrome postcard is. No border, all newer, but they do sell if you get the right ones. Again, 90, 95% of all chromes aren't worth much at all. So you have to be selective and know what you're doing in some of these postcard fields. Now the next one here is a real photo, real picture postcard of the Western star George O'Brien. He starred in serials as well as full length feature films. Very well known. We did sell this one for $24.50. Things like this I usually get for a dollar or less, depending on how I buy them, if I buy them in bulk or not. Now I've bought three more lots of real photo postcards of movie actors and actresses. Haven't got any of them up yet, so you will see those going up shortly, and I should pump out some sales really quick the first couple days we start to list them. Now the next one here is a postcard from Boyerstown, PA. 
This is a real picture postcard. I took a hundred bucks on these. I always mark them fairly high. Some of these trains can go for some good money. I actually have five or six of this exact same engine on multiple spots along the same route, all in postcard form. I paid a dollar a piece for them from one specific sale. Very happy with the sale. Again, this one sold for $100 on its own. I was happy with that. I judged them prior to actually accepting any offer by prior sales from the town or the city that's around it. And that's pretty high up on anything from PA for railroad related cards. So I was very happy with the $100 on that one. Now, just like anything else, California items sell no matter what they are. This has Lottie on it, Stockton as well. Um, that might have helped sell it if Stockton was actually in the title. Somebody must have missed that or didn't realize that. This is all the way from World War II. I usually date these 1930s to 50s because they may have used them after the war, but it's a patriotic label. You can see the bomber in the actual image, and it has some kind of elf or something like that skating. So this one went for 25 bucks, and we've sold several roller skating labels just in the last couple days. Let's move on to the next one here. Next one here is another label. This is Middle East Airlines, probably from the 40s or 50s. Uh, this one did sell for $34.50. Usually these labels will sit for a little while. It ranges into the long tail items, but sometimes they go fairly quick depending on the airline or what's on the label. Some labels are extremely rare, just like any other field. 90-95% of most labels aren't worth a fortune, but that other 5%, maybe 10% really go well. Now, the next one here is an Abbott and Costello movie-related sheet music. No bow to doubt it. Now, I actually remember the song. I've seen pretty much every Abbott and Costello movie that there is. It used to be on in the weekends with uh, the Three Stooges, and I liked Abbott and Costello back in the day. Back in the day, there wasn't cable, so you watched what was on TV, and I've literally watched these for hours. These always sell. It did sell for $17.50. I usually just throw a price up even if it's higher than the other ones, and they always seem to sell. Certain ones like the Marx Brothers, anything related to the Three Stooges or Abbott and Costello, all that kind of stuff as a sheet music piece goes very well. And as well with this one, I paid a dollar or less for this. I get so much sheet music and it's kind of hard to keep track on what we pay for each one, but I never pay pretty much more than a dollar on anything. And in most cases, it's 50 cents or even pennies when I buy them in a huge big bulk tub. Now the next one here is a textbook of Ray's Mathematics. It's higher algebra. I've shown these in haul videos all the time. These are something I usually get for a dollar or less. It's usually a pretty good turnover rate. I took $14.50 on this one here. These do show up. I paid a dollar or less for this specific book. I buy them all the time. Any of the Rays from prior, from 1880s or before, I will always nab up at a dollar or less. It's a quick 10 bucks every time I get one. I have never had a problem selling any of the Rays mathematical books. They're, again, textbooks. This is an algebra specific, but he made a ton of different textbooks, all math related. Everyone sells for at least 10 bucks. Never sold one for less than 10 bucks, and everyone has sold. Next one here is a plated 1920s Art Deco buckle of some sort. Not in the best condition. It could probably be buffed up very well. I don't clean these mostly. I don't mess with it. I let whoever buys them mess with cleaning up the finish. Most of the time you can get these to shine, though. I used to clean them up in the past. These days I don't mess with them. It did sell for $14.99. This was in a quarter bin. I got several of these type of buckles, all with different letters, and that's about what I get for them, 10 to 15 bucks. Next one here is a military 8x10 photo. It's of a specific airplane. I sell these constantly. I took 30 bucks on this one as well as on another one. The same person bought two of these. We sell on average one or two of these every day of the week these days. I've got hundreds and hundreds of these up, and I've got stacks of them that haven't been listed yet as well. Photos are usually money in the bank for us. I usually get a huge lot and sell a couple of them and pay for the entire lot instantly on the first day I list them. Same case with these here. Just another one here. This is, a, I would guess, a troop transport or something along that line. Again, 30. I think this one actually went for 35 on this one. So either way, nice sale. Dollar or less is what I have into these across the board because I buy them in huge bulk. Sometimes I buy a thousand photo 8x10s from assortments and collections. Now a novice or someone just getting into this field is not going to be able to find quantity like that cheaply. Something you have to hunt and peck for, maybe regional sales or 
scheduled live auctions or something like that that you're going to have to get to to find some of these items. A good estate sale, you might find a few hundred of these as well. Next one here is a booklet of Walt Disneyland postcards. Now, generally, I wouldn't buy any of these type of postcards. They're in long book form. They're actually longer than a normal postcard because it has a stub or something along the other side that has another copy of the image usually on these. I, again, don't usually mess with these, but on the Disney ones, I always buy them. I think I got like 50 cents or a dollar in each pack of these, and I sold five to the very same person for $12.50 plus they paid for shipping. So this was a quick turnaround on the couple bucks I have into all of these. They were untouched, unused, mint condition. I have more of these. I don't list too many of the same kind all at the same time because you're competing against yourself when you do that. I don't flood the market in things that I sell like this. Another one, 1250. Another one, 1250. Again, Fantasyland, another one, 1250. And this is Adventureland, 1250 as well. They're all from the same era, from the same collection, same series, same everything. And I think there's still a couple more to this series or set as well. So I always look out for these. There are a few other ones from California, like Monterey or something along that line, or Tahoe, that will still sell. Those are about the only exception. For the most part, I don't buy any booklets of postcards. And I also don't buy any of the old folder types that unfold to like a long row of postcard type images attached together. Those almost always aren't worth anything. You gotta be extremely selective if it's not a standard three and a half by five and a half postcard for it to hold any value. 95 to 98% of all of these type of items have no value. Let's move on to the next item here. Next one is a Hotel Statler from Detroit. It's a cloth napkin, nothing fancy, nothing special. The image is a little off. It's actually a dulled pink with gray textural stripes running across it. I took 30 on this. I had a couple of these. I paid a dollar a piece for them. Average price is around $34. This kind of stuff always sells. Even paper napkins from hotels, I can get 50, 60 bucks for if it's the right one or if it's old enough. Paper napkins go all the way back to the 1880s and 1890s as well, if you didn't know that. So I look out for all of this type of stuff, dirty, dingy or not. People will send them off and have them professionally cleaned. And sometimes they'll frame them and mat them on their wall, especially the hotel buffs that are really into a specific hotel. Now here is a die stamper, and I've shown some of these. I showed the haul where I got these. I've sold five or six of these. We're over $600 in return investment on these. I spent just over 100 bucks on them, like 130 So this one alone went for 100 bucks. I throw some wild price on there and take what I can get on these. Now this is not a actual Native American tribe from what I've found out. This is actually a bow and arrow club is what it is. Why they call themselves the uh, an Indian tribe, such forth like that, I have no idea. But either way, it sold very well. 100 bucks, I was very happy with it. So this one die hub here paid for almost all of them, really in one big fail swoop. So now I can just play around with the other ones. I'll probably drop the price here shortly and just blow them out. They do weigh a lot, so that's the only consideration. I think this one single die hub was around six to eight pounds. Now here is a Civil War two-tine fork, Civil War era, 1860s, 1870s. It has the rest on it. It's totally solid pearl handle on this, which is rather interesting to have that big of a chunk of pearl. This one did go for $34.50. I talk about silverware all the time. We sell silverware all the time. Mostly forks, spoons, sometimes some serving knives like this. Usually the two-tine or three-tine forks are usually what I do the best on. I pretty much sell every one of those that I get. They're highly desirable these days. They don't make them anymore. There's not many reproductions even around these days as well. So all of these type of things go fairly well for us, especially these serving, these larger size pieces. And the last one here is a Hires Root Beer trade card from the 1870s. It's an interesting earlier one. This is a very scarce card. And I had one person make an offer on three of those, and we sold them for around 90 bucks a card to the same person. Multiple sales are a big thing for us. Many times over, we'll get somebody who buys at least a couple cards for us any given day. And that goes for postcards, labels, photos. Whatever we sell, we sell multiple items. Now that's something that's not possible with clothing or modern day electronics or even video games or books for the most part. But collectibles are totally different. 
you want to have as many of the same type of item up as you can to get these sales. It makes things move quicker because you've already got the person in the door and they're going to save postage. That's another thing with charging for postage especially if they think they're going to come back or see other items that they may be interested in. That's usually a plus. Every day of the week, we do multiple purchases to the same person. And on many days of almost every single week, we sell multiple items to multiple people. Sometimes three and four different individuals buy more than three and four items a piece on any given day. Multiple purchases to the same person are a huge plus to your business. It will 100% increase your bottom line. But again, it's not possible in many fields that you sell in. Collectibles, though, are free game on any of the collectibles fields because collectors collect. They don't slow down in the summer. They don't die off. It's not like clothing. It's not like books. People who collect want their items regardless. Collectors are diehard fans of whatever they collect, and they will do or buy whatever it takes whenever it is available. So, But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.